Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of Meet the. I'm your host, Troy Rawlings. And today we have the lovely, vivacious, beautiful. I don't know how old she is, because I swear she she's been around forever, but she still looks like she a baby. A beautiful baby. Oh, <laughs> Actress, vocalist, um, voiceover artist, writer, entrepreneur, model, and water walker. You got to tell us about that. Uh, the one and only Miss Breely Evans. How are you, girl? Cue the claps. Cue, cue, cue the cue. Oh. I am amazing. I am amazing. Oh, you guys, you guys, sit down, sit down, sit down. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I am fantastic. Happy to be here with you. And, you know, I'm so glad that you said something about my age because my girlfriends were teasing and like, chick, you don't have any gray hair. And I said, just for y'all, just for y'all this week. I see the, I see the little, uh, you gonna do that for gray hair neatly combed in place. Yes, I am what you call age fluid, honey. There's a new, there's a new title in town that's called age fluid, and that would be me. Yes, I rock anywhere from between twenty five to forty five. What you need? What you need to do? You can be the high school hottie. You can still be the high school hottie. Well, then let me take it down eighteen. Come on. <laughs> but she legal, guys. She legal. Uh, <laughs> so what's been going? All right, all right. I, I kind of Tarantino the interview a little bit, so I'll be a little bit of all over the place, but I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. Where are you originally from, B? I am from Oakland, California. Born and raised. Uh, I started off at Catholic school, believe it or not. Then I went to high school at a performing arts high school, Skyline High. And mm -hmm. after that, uh, my dad made me go to his alma mater for college, which is Cal State Hayward. And um, just in my about my second year, I was like, L.A. was calling, but I had something else in mind. So I actually um, left school and uh, went to Cal State L.A. to finish. But I was seeking the music. It wasn't really about school. Yeah. Uh -huh. So your, your first love, would you say your first love was music versus acting? I would say my first love is music. Um, is. That is what... Uh, if. The first thing I knew I wanted to do was be a singer. You know, I was in, grew up in church, so being a part of the church choir and just, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? A singer. That, that was my, <laughs> that was my answer. Um, and so I knew it was entertainment, but you know, it's funny how it's coming full circle right now. So, okay, you go to, you're in Oakland. Uh, I didn't know you were from Oakland. I don't know why I always thought you were from back east. Bay um, area. I'm from the Bay. Yeah. From the Bay. So, so you finished college. Did you already start doing event? You were already doing the choir piece. Were you already doing singing events? Did you do any theater in high school, college at I, all? Singing theater. Yeah. Uh, but in high school, um, I did uh, theater classes and acting classes, and I was also since the age of about nine, I had been in girl groups. So on Saturday mornings, when you would drive down the street and see little girls practicing steps out front, that was me and my friends, you know. But what was the song? Wait, wait, wait. What was the song that y'all had to get down pat? That we were singing. Oh, my gosh. We were singing every was singing on a regular basis. The and one where you got to do your, your first solo and shake your, shake shake your booty. Thing. Whatever it was. Shake it what you was, um, Thought you had or what you had? Um, called, uh, I mean, we did so many songs, but one that come we loved. At the, I have a very deep voice, and so I used to feel ashamed that I couldn't sing soprano like the other girls. And my mom introduced me to a lot of singers who had this contralto voice, and so this Anita Baker Angel was one song was like that was my stunner song that I could really sing. So, um, but a lot of Anita Baker songs I remember practicing to uh as a, a little girl trying to come up in this music so yeah so i had done a lot of shows and things i mean i sang for bar mitzvahs and funerals and weddings and you know i was just you know you know they love it, it was like oh the cute one come over here and then you're yeah, like, I was making money singing a long time ago so yeah i i had little taffeta dresses my grandmother would make my cousin and i 
these little pink taffeta dresses. And we would go sing for events and we were getting paid. We had our little business cards called Studio Two. It was not a game. We had rehearsal. It was not dance class. It was on. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so when did the when did the acting bug just when did the acting bug roll up on you and was like, ow? Well, what had happened was I was, hey, somebody just bought my book. Thank you, Lord. Every time you hear that ding, that means someone has just purchased from BrayleyEvans.com. Don't be left out. Go now. BrayleyEvans.com. <laughs> well, I got to have the thing come across the bottom. Exactly. Like, exactly. Ding. I love it. And, and I it. I'll leave it on for that purpose. But anyway, um, uh, the acting bug. So I was singing around in L.A. I graduated uh, college. And... Um, my neighbor, a Hispanic guy, was on a McDonald's commercial. And I saw him out, you know, parking his car one day. I waited for him to get out. I said, I saw you on the McDonald's commercial. Oh my God, it was amazing. He was like, Yeah, whatever. And you have your own show. Mm, this was in 2006. I said, No, I don't know. He said, Yeah, yeah. I tell everyone I live next door to that famous actress. Said, no. He said, You've never been on TV? No. He said, you know what? I'm about to go to my agent's office. You should ride with me because I totally thought you were an actor. Like, you give me actor vibes. And I was like, what? Took me. Literally, I got in the car. He was really a stranger <laughs> and went to his agent's office. And she not, this story could have ended a whole nother way. A whole <laughs> he was like, come on with me. Little I, girls, don't do, do this. This was in 2006. Maybe things were different then. This ain't the this ain't the same era. But right. and he was my neighbor, and he was, he was a Hispanic family, and so you know how it'd be mama, daddy, kids, cousin, uncles. Like so, I was like, it's a lot of people in that house. So if something go down, it's a lot of people. You know, I just I felt comfortable. We had lived there a couple of years, but anyway. And you uh, just saw McDonald's commercial, so. Yeah. And it was a commercial agent. And she told me, honey, you should have been on TV. You wasted my money and your time. I said, OK. And so with no headshots, no training, she began to send me out to auditions. And on my 10th audition, I booked that infamous Twix commercial. Cue the Twix commercial right here. <laughs> All y'all five. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter in the corner like. Right, right, right. I love it. So, so yeah. what was the Twix? All right, give me the line. Did you have a line in a commercial? I, I, I had more. I was the Twix commercial. If you uh, type in YouTube, Twix booty. Oh, everything I love. That's what yes. it is. Twix oh. booty. You will see the commercial. You know <laughs> my famous line in that uh, is, Pookie Pie, does my butt look big in these? And he know the right answer to say. So yeah, that thing went internationally and I got a check for $40,000 and I said, wait a minute. Commercial when the dude start stuffing the Twix in his mouth? Yes, that's the commercial. That was my very first time on television. What? Yes, very first Man, time. I got to go back. Now I don't feel bad because I usually, you know, it's really is fun to look at. But yeah. I usually... Uh, <laughs> I usually go through, now I got to go back and look. I'm like, I know a girl that's in a Twix commercial. Yeah. I'm almost 15 years, 15 years ago, B. Is it, I, my life, I am so, I can't even begin. This is the longest job I've ever had. You know, I was fired from every other job. Like I, when people, you know, when you have a regular nine to five, but you know, you don't belong there. Why do we stay? I could have been on this trek, but I just thought, you know, you're supposed to have a job. You're supposed to, you know, make a check somewhere every week. And I know that there's someone out there listening uh, and watching this interview and they're probably like, yeah, that's me. I'm always fired or it never works out. It's because you're not listening to the God inside of you. Uh, and you should be following that dream, that passion, that, that I'm telling you, it'll pay you. But you gotta trust it first and trust it wholeheartedly. Quit your I dare you to quit your job. My mother says, stop telling people to quit their job. I said, I have to tell them, mommy, because on the other side of that thing is they'll be amazed what God has for them. I was talking to a friend of mine recently, and she said, um, and not just her, I won't just put it on her because she see this and like, why you always say that? Like they they don't know who you are. <laughs> but I heard somebody else say it. And I said, Look, it's like, yeah, I'm just you know, praying God gives me more faith. I was like, God won't give you more faith. I said, yeah. 
It's like looking at your bicep and say, come on, bicep, bro. You have to exercise your face. Come on, bicep, grow. Come so, on, tummy. You don't want a flat stomach, so come on, tummy, so, go down. Okay. Yeah, you better leave yourself alone. <laughs> hey! So, that's going to be... <laughs> that's gonna be in the extra cuts. I mean, leave yourself, you fine. Leave it alone. It's some brothers right now, like <laughs> really? we don't need no more. We don't need no more flat stomachs unless it's naturally flat. Well, if it's tea, go on, get your tea on. I don't mind. Yeah. But uh, but you said you said a, a mouthful. Um, your book. Mention your book, the ABCs. Yeah. So I never set out to be just like I never set out to be an actress because I always wanted to do music. I never set out to be an author. Um, I was doing these IMs personally, and I literally heard God say, go live on Instagram. And I was like, this is between you and me. And he was like, go live. I went live and people were like, we love these. We want to read them. And I was like, no, I'm just saying I am beautiful. I am amazing. I am abundant. I am courageous. I am determined. I And I would go through the alphabet. I'm gonna, and they were like, where do, I, where do we read it? I said, no, you don't read it. You just repeat after me. They just wouldn't get it. And they were like, Re so one day, and I wish I could remember her name, but a fan emailed me all the I am's I had said on my lives and said, here, here's your book. Like, I just typed up everything you, I was like, God, it chills. come on, Jesus. Like, really? So she did that. So I created an ebook of it. Okay. Oh, here go an ebook, y'all. People were like. Thanks for the ebook. And they bought it at $9.99. But they were like, thanks for the ebook. We want to hold it. I had an interview on a radio. Love, don't you love hearing that right now that people still like the whole books? They still like the whole books. And um, we talked about the ebook. And after that interview, AJ Joyner reached out to me and said, Hi, I'd like, I am a publisher and I'd like to uh, take your ebook and make it into a hardback. And I said, okay i don't even know what that means how much does it cost he's like don't worry about it let's go and so the abcs of ims was born uh i have a hardback and a paperback it has five words to each letter in the alphabet because i was like god it's only 26 letters in the alphabet that's not a book but he kept downloading words he kept downloading how to's he the ABCs of I am's is because it's for every age level. He said, you're connecting the babies to the adults, to the PhDs, the JDs and the REVs. It don't matter. They can all, everyone started language with an ABC. So you're going to teach them how to speak life, speak prosperity, speak love, speak success into their lives by simply saying, I am blank. Fill in the blank, whatever you need. I am money. I need money. I am love. I am a hug. I am, you know, whatever you need. Speak the I am because the I am is like the greatest sentence you'll ever say in your life. And it's been shaping our lives every day. And we say it so frivolously. I'm sick. I'm, you know, I, I don't feel good. You know, you just, you say these I'ms and I am's without even thinking not realizing that the universe only hears what you say and it doesn't know slang. It ain't set up that way. So when people tell you, you're killing it, I'm like, no. Because see, that's what the enemy does. Kills, steals, and destroys. I actually give life. life. Yeah, I actually take words on a page for a living and I, I breathe life into words from a page. I use my lungs and the air and my vocal cords and I actually embody a human story. I actually give life for a living. That's what I do. So they're like, oh yeah. So I've learned to uh, manifest everything in my life. It was like, once I, I got a hold of it, I started saying, well, let me try it on this. Well, let me try it on that. Well, let me try it. And I mean, when things started showing up, I was like, uh -uh, okay. So now I got to be careful of what I say. And now I have to teach this thing. And so uh, I'm super excited about even what God has next because he's blown my mind time and time again. Like I said, with no training, no formal anything, uh, did these commercials and that was going well. And that was on the commercial space, but I didn't have a theatrical agent. And right. I was in a movie with my first movies with Queen Latifah called Just Right. And it, I didn't have an audition. Right, what, he, let me say something about your, what your neighbor said. Certain people 
And I got this when I, I started getting this when I got to L.A. I just figured I'd look like a Bo, Will Smith, or Wayans or something. And they figured I was somebody else. He's like, I've seen you before. You act? You do com-? I was like, yeah, I do comedy. He's like, oh, I've seen you. I've seen hands I was like, no, no, it's not. It, it is me. But you're right. I would have think I would. You have one of those faces that you feel like you saw in, in childhood sitcoms all the way through. That you have the whole energy. The re- so a lot of it, and as a people, in a, in being a performer and singing, you actually did have training because you perform. You know when you got to be able to perform. You um, a trainer of mine years ago. He said, "Troy, you have a beautiful voice, but I can't teach you how to feel it." You know, so it's it's that thing that you have to make sure you continuously doing. And when the opportunity came, you just rose to the occasion. But I, I wanted you to mention your book early off in the interview because um, you embody it. Come on. You already, you initially do it. You do it. Um, um, some, some, someone out there, like you said, someone out there is doing something haphazardly. Like it's just, it's regular to everybody. And so when you say it, it is supposed to feel like that to you. It's like, all I did was I just, you know, I was just doing, you were just doing you. And, but that is the thing that we, because once we get to the place where we realize, oh, this is the blessing. I have a bigger, this is what I do. The next piece is to teach it mm-hmm. and to do so. So you're in a duplication mode that's bananas do right you, now. I say that all the time. It's so funny. I say you have not reached success until you duplicate yourself. Like until others are like, uh, what's that formula? And let me try it out. Then I don't think you really reached a point of success. So all of us should be striving to hear our inner uh, self in, you know, the heavenly downloads for yourself as to what your purpose is. And as you lean into that, like doors fling open. Um, it's like, you know, a lot of times we're worried about what's next and where's resources and money going to come from. but I have learned as I rest, God works. And when I'm working on a thing, trying to make it happen, he rests. Somebody back there like, oh, they, they feel, what's this feeling I feel? You getting churched? You don't even know it. I'm sorry. <laughs> when, it you know, when we are done working and we just sit back, like I'm in between movies right now. As everyone knows, I have three shows on right now. One's called Family Business on BET. Um, one is called uh, For the Love of Jason and the other Terra Lake Drive, both on uh, UMC now called All Black. So three shows on and I'm chilling. I've wrapped on each set and I'm in between shows. But I need y'all to hear what I just said. I used the I'm, I'm in between shows. I first heard myself say that when I was working at Time Warner Cable, um, when I didn't understand language. And so we knew you were famous working here under a different name. I was like, well, I'm in between shows. And it hit me that I said that I'm in between shows. That speaks to calling finishing a thing and starting a new thing. Like I had called in what was next without even thinking about what I was saying. So that sentence was so powerful because not but a few months later was I getting a call and uh, offered to audition for the movie Sparkle with Whitney Houston. And that's what took me out of that job because I, I was booking, booking, booking commercials and everything and then did the movie and then it kind of went down. Like So I, I always blame it. Something in my mouth killed off that momentum. And so I found myself, oh, I got to get a job because uh, there's no acting calling. So I begin to do the work. See all that working. I didn't now, find now, rest. Now talk, what, what energy do you feel when you, when you feel like you're doing the hustle to get a job? What energy is that? Run um, off, run off some of those things so people can recognize what exactly is, is, is The biggest word that comes to mind is lack. Is when you feel like, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my <laughs> car note? Oh, oh, another book sold. Thank you. How am I gonna pay my it's like a, it's like a, a a modern day black. It's a wonderful life. It's like oh, Angel done got his wing. Come on, it? come on. That's fantastic. Um, Fire. It's Fire. so beautiful. It's a, I, I leave that thing on for a reason. But anyway, um, so it's it's um, 
focusing on the lack in your life in every area, be it love, be it health, be it wealth, be it whatever, as you focus and have anxiety, and when you ask the question, well, how do I get it? How is not our business? We just need to desire a thing and call it in and say, this is mine. I am that thing. And then sit back and really wait. Like, and then how you wait is you help others. Like you become a waiter in a mm-hmm. restaurant. Not mm-hmm. wait, sit down That's, and do like that. But you, you wait is serve. Is serve. Serve somebody else's dream that's yes. in that area. I dare you to serve something that's completely away from it. It doesn't even matter. I remember I used to feel like the more I go downtown LA and I serve the homeless, it seemed like if I go do that one time, then I come back home, a job is waiting for me. So I dare people to begin to use your life as a service to others. And God got you as you get others. It is, it is in, you know, coming from a place abandoned at a young age and and not most people say abandoned they left you as a baby no it's like my parents said my mom was like i can't stay here anymore i know you got to go to school my father was like she left i can't believe he got depressed one day you look up and you're like my father ain't come home last night i'm working i'm going to school and 14. wow what what happens what transitions in your mind is like later on in life you're like man it's this sense of not being stable the thing in You ain't gonna get me emotional on here, girl. The thing that stabilized me the most was helping people who were either looking for a place or were homeless, Mm. getting Mm homeless. And I've never in the past 13 years had to worry about a place to stay in Los Angeles. Come on. But it is is a principle, and you broke something down very key. The weight. Listen, people, because that's that's golden. I don't, I, I Larry King these things. Rest in peace, Larry King, one of the greatest. So I don't know where the interview was going. I let it go where it go. So wait, just the towel over your hand. How may I help you? If you wait like that, if you serve, um, that is the process. Because a lot of times people hear wait or don't, what's I'm supposed to sit still and wait for it to come. No, no, no. Wait, serve. So that's that in and of itself is pop. You better have, you're going to have to do another book. If W ain't wait, if you don't have wait in W, you can have to do another book. I got to do another book then. You got to do a book or wait. What else kind of came to mind is like, you know how the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. It doesn't mean stop in your tracks. It means be still in your spirit. Like, calm down. That still is like, you know, be at peace. You know, be still. In the, I'm God. I got this. I know your end from your beginning. I'm the one who called you into oh, this. Place. Like, come on. Come on. Like, you, you know. We are so concerned about things that don't concern us, and it just wastes time. I was literally just listening because we're in we're in a dispensation of time, and I want to touch on um, I want to touch on some of the people you work with, and uh, not just to name drop, but I want to I want to know the people that gave you that girl, you know, and and drop something in you. I want three people that drop something in you, is because you just mentioned you work with Whitney. I don't know how that experience was, but I want like three people that drop so many. But before we get there, um, I was watching one day I was cleaning. Uh, I just um, moved back to Burbank. My office is here in Burbank. I know a place in Burbank. So I love being in Media City. And I'm cleaning, doing my thing. And Tyler comes on YouTube, then Steve and Jay Z. And I realized that it, in, in, in some lights, we talk about different things. You know, we're living in a time where we have Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and Elon Musk. I just got out of a Tesla, yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm trying to get into one. Come uh, on. And uh, I'm going to get into one. Oh, come on! <laughs> you get it! You just go. I heard that right. So if you see me and B, I'm 6'2". I don't know how short B is, but if you see me and B, well, actually, me and B, 6'2", two, two, sitting down. So uh, <laughs> so Steve said, he mentioned, and I've always heard him talk, but this time he said, see, he was talking to a group of people at some speaking event. He said, I just had to get out of the how. And I've heard that so much lately. I've said it. And... And I literally, so this is the spiritual flip that's going to be on y'all. So I literally had something I was coming into. And I was like, oh, man, I'm washing dishes because, you know, you get some good word when you wash dishes. He's talk right to you. 
and he's like, I was like, oh, what? May not come when you want it, but always. And he said, stop. That's a lie. He said, the provision was always there. You just hear differently when you're in distress. Ooh. Ooh. So a lot of times we have to get to the point of frustration before we go like this. I get and he was saying it was always here. Mm-hmm. You just, as soon as you get, that's the hustle mode. The hustle mode, we got to watch out for that. Because the hustle mode says, as soon as the opportunity comes, our mind says, okay, this is what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And you got to stop and be like, okay, thank you. All right, God. We gotta, <laughs> you got to walk and talk to the Holy Spirit and kind of get yourself together. All right. So three people, because I know you got a boogie. I, 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 uh, let's say three people. Gosh, your time flies when you have fun. I, 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 uh, three people. My grandmother, Etta May Yarbrough, who... No, no, no. Three people you work with. And then I'm going to hear more about your grandmother. Three people. Well, your grandmother would have been first. Yeah. So you, you can mention your grandmother. And I want three actors that okay, you work with. Three people. And they dropped something in you that became... Well, Granny was first because it was her yelling my name from the audience um that <laughs> gave me the and that that's when I knew you know when I heard that I knew I was in the zone okay so uh I live for for that in my head now three people I've worked with that that what I like to say gave me wings uh the first one was Queen Latifah I leaned over to Queen on the set of Just Right and said am I doing it wrong I had never, hey, another book sold. Come on, God, come through. Um, I said, am I doing it wrong? Because they keep saying cut and go back to one. And, and, and she said, girl, they are moving the lights and the camera getting us from every angle. I said, oh. And she said, keep doing you, boo. Like, like, okay, that's good, cut. She said, that's how you like, that's how you got here. Keep doing you. And when she said, keep doing me, I just got wings. Like, oh, I can sit that down in this thing. I ain't got to, <laughs> like, I, I got a sense of confidence from that. I'll never forget when I met Oprah and it was at a uh, a gala and people were giving to a nonprofit. And she said, if those who are going to give, come on up and get in line, come talk to me and tell me what you're going to give. Well, people were going up giving 100000 500000 you know, my mother, my mother looked at me. She said, where you go? I said, I got to give something. She said, girl, we ain't got money like that. I said, I want to meet Oprah and I'm going to give something. I don't, I just, so maybe a, a lady ahead of me said, I'm going to give $5,000. I said, Ooh, thank you, Lord. Cause that's in my range. Come on down. So I got up and I still outdid that lady and said, she said, hi, what's your name? What you going to give? I said, hello, Auntie Oprah. When I, before I knew she don't like to be called Auntie. But I was like, hello, Auntie Oprah. I'm, I'm actress Braley Evans, and I am going to give $1,000 for the next 10 years to this organization. And she said, well, I see how you did that. I see how you did that. She said, mm, but what else you going to give? I, was like, I said, when I play you in your autobiography, I'm going to give my check to this organization. And the crowd went wild. It was crazy. And she looked at me. Said, she, Don't put me on the spot, Braylee. Braylee <laughs> Evans. She put started this off and said to me, Troy, if you, I'm ready. So yeah. Oprah talent, and she hit Oprah back with the Oprah. I hit Oprah back. Oprah. <laughs> I did Oprah on Oprah. Did and Oprah on Oprah. I both my hands and looked me dead in my pupils. I don't know if anyone's ever looked me in my pupils. I don't even think the men I've loved have looked me in my pupils. But anyway, she looked me in my pupils and said, believe it. And when she said, believe it, I felt like this something shocked my body. And I've never been the same. And that was in April of twenty. 18 November 2018 is when I booked the show Ambitions on OWN. And I say, I knew I was going to work with her. 
And did she, I wonder if did she know that it was me when when my little picture came across her desk as an actress to be on this show? Did she say that's the little girl that said she was gonna play me? I always I cannot wait to I haven't had a chance to ask her that again. But anyway, so that's my second person that has given me that. And the third person that I've worked with, where'd you go? I'm in the room by myself. Is this thing on? It's, it's still recording. So hi, this is Braley Evans on the Troy Rollins show. Oh, okay, he's back. I was about to yeah, like this. I said, well, hang on, I'm about to have, I'm about to, I was gonna be the I like to take over the show. I was gonna take One. over the show. I didn't know what happened. But anyway, the third person that I've worked with that really have it has ignited me. I mean, there's been so many. Those are two biggies. Do I have to have worked with them? Are they actor actors? Yes. No. One of my mentors is Mil Will Smith. He doesn't know it, but he is a mentor of mine. Um, I love his mind. And what he's taught me is when I fear something, attack it. Exactly. You know, he's taught me the universe likes to move like water. It likes to conform to what you say and what you want to do. So, you know, and just put a brick a day builds a wall. Like you don't have to have it all. You just, you just do a little bit a day. Like he says some things that really hit me in the gut and get me in my space and in my zone. So um, those would be the, my three. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we on time? Because I know you got a boogie. You got a boogie? You ready? You want to wrap in five minutes? Oh, hey, you give me five minutes, we can do We can go a whole nother. You got five minutes? I am the five minute. Let's see what you can do with this good hot five I'm minutes. I'm gangster in five minutes. Okay. So, Will Smith, Oprah Winfrey, and Queen Latifah. Yeah. And all of them came, like you said, all of them came from a place when they poured into you with something key. When Queen Latifah said, be you, she is definitely her every time she hits that screen, even on Equalizer right now. <laughs> uh, with Oprah saying, believe it, the reason she spoke it to you like that is because remember how she talked about when she read The Color Purple, she said nothing in life more that she wanted to do than that. Yeah. And when you look at what she was doing prior to that and around that, we don't know that. Like we're watching Oprah be Oprah. We don't know, we don't even know she's even thinking about acting until we see her as Sophia. Yes, we don't even know that's on her agenda. Mm -hmm. So the music, what all do you want to do with your music right now? Well, I set out to be uh, Beyonce before there was one. So uh, <laughs> I'm coming back to reclaim my okay. I'm going to be Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like, hilarious. So my name was Braylance, okay? Not oh. Beyonce, but Braylance. So no, with my music, I wanted to touch, move, and inspire people. Um, the song I have out now is called Ambitious. Excuse me. Ambitious. It is named after ambitions because I wanted people to know that when your ambitions, the show I was on, that was on OWN, did not come back for a second season. When your ambitions don't work out, you stay ambitious. So I named my first si single Ambitious. It's on all digital platforms. Please go pick it up. Go listen to it. Go look at the music video. Um, that's on YouTube. And uh, I, that was my actually my directorial debut. I also uh, directed that video. But my point to the music is to touch, move, and inspire. I want people to use all of their gifts, but I don't want you to use them all at once is the key. I had to learn that. Um, because I would be trying to do this and do that and do this. And then I, once I focused on acting alone, I mean, it, you, I have over 35 projects under my belt. And now I feel like I can go back to the music now and people are like, oh, I have a name. They know who I am, you know. So and this is, mind you, this is from 2006 to now. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a span of, 15 years and you have 35 projects under your belt. Over 35. And guess how I know that? The last interview I just did a couple days ago, the young lady said, so with 15 plus uh, projects, I said, I mean, she said with 35 plus projects, I said, excuse me, 
She, she said, well, I'm not counting the three you have on TV now, and I'm sure you have some in the can that hasn't come out yet. I had no idea I had done 35 plus projects. Like I had, like, I, 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 I've just been working. There's not, I don't, you know, I don't turn my collar down. For nothing. The only thing I will turn down is my collar, I should say, because, you know, I take after Samuel Jackson, baby, what we're doing. <laughs> if my calendar is open and say, yes, you got a check. Let's go. Let's see what we can do. So um, I love to work. And what I do is not work. It's living um, yeah. a slice of life, you know, showing a slice of somebody's life it is amazing. Like I, I would do it for free, but don't tell nobody. No, 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 no. People don't. You don't look free. <laughs> you don't look like she's free. That's why. The, that's why the brothers come up. <laughs> they be like, "Let me stay." <laughs> why are you moonwalking? Why are you moonwalking, bro? Speaking of moonwalking, water walkers. Where did that come from? Hey, I was in the hospital getting my uh, gallbladder removed, and God played a trick on me because I've been asking Him for children for a while. And they put me in the maternity ward, believe it or not, to recover because they were out of rooms and heard who I was and wanted to give me a suite. And the only suite that was available at Cedar Side Night, Los Angeles, California, was in the maternity. And I said, God, you've got to be kidding me. Really? Ain't no baby, ain't no husband, ain't no sperm in sight. But I'm in the maternity ward. As I was crying and oh, you're the, oh, you're the, oh, can we get you? Oh, oh, okay. Let <laughs> me back up the room. So God gave me a different wow. baby in there. And it was, he kept, I kept hearing water walkers, water. I was like, what is a water walker? What is that? And so as I searched my Bible and read the story of Peter getting out of the boat, um, he noticed Jesus, what he thought was Jesus. And then he heard, come, Jesus at you. Jesus said, come on. And he got out the boat. He didn't look at the disciples and said, should I go? What y'all think? He actually got all out of the boat and began to walk on water, do something that is humanly impossible. And during the walking on the water, a storm started to rage. And so when he began to look at the storm, he began to sink, but he didn't drown. God came on out there, got him, walked him to the shore. That's the best part of the story that nobody highlights is that when we try something new, you might feel like you're beginning to sink and it doesn't matter because you'll never drown. That's the best part of the story. It's like and he walked him back to the boat. He walked him. Yeah, to where he was going. back to the boat. Exactly. He walked him to where he was going. Best part of the story. So uh, I named my company Water Walkers Worldwide Incorporated. And uh, I remember an attorney telling me, oh, you don't need an incorporation now because you don't make $100,000 yet. See, I hear that kind of thing. And I say, oh, for real? Then I went on 1-800-COMPANIES and did my own uh, incorporation. And listen, when I finished that- Shout out to 1-800-COMPANIES for everybody that need an incorporation. Oh, I, they need to give me a, a check. <laughs> but um, I literally went on there, did my own, of course, my neighbor. Hello, neighbor. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, she's never done that in, in the history of being my neighbor. But I'm a big this interview. Hilarious. Um, after I put that those the paperwork in place to have the incorporation, I landed my first hundred thousand dollar deal. So do you see how God works? It's like you, you we're waiting on what people say we have to have in what order, but God is saying, I dare you to walk towards it. So Troy, when you going to um, test drive your Tesla? I'll be up there this week okay. since it's walking distance from my crib. Oh, so it's been waiting on you like that? It's like, that's all you had to go to schedule your um, touchless uh, test drive mm. and feel the feelings of having it and then report back when it's done. Because And then the how ain't your business. It, 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 that ain't your business. Because I said, I'll, I'll go up here and test drive it. Somebody might say, you look good in that car. I want to buy it for her. <laughs> I mean, stranger things have happened. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one I want to see. But with my luck, it'll be a guy say, he looks good in that car. Can I buy it? And he's like, wait, who are you? No, thank you, sir. Let Hold go. up. Hold up. I don't want it like that. <laughs> B, where are you at now? Are you in the ATL? No, you I'm in Los Angeles, California right now. I've been shooting a family business here, and I just oh. ran last week. You in L.A.B.? 
All right, y'all, we got to go. I'll talk to you soon. No. <laughs> She's going to try to come find me, guys. I'm hiding. No. We have two minutes left. How would you like to use All that? right. Give the information. Let everybody know how to get in touch with you so we get I out of here. At Braley Evans on every single platform, B-R-E-L-Y, E-V-A-N-S, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, BraleyEvans.com to buy my book and other fun gifts that I love. I, I do take after Oprah. I sell things I love. So you'll see a variety of things on my um, on, on my web store. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. And you can find Braley Evans a little bit of everywhere. And um, like I said, if you not only look on social media, Google or find out everything that's going on, information will be below in the IG TV snippet and the YouTube, all that good stuff. And I truly appreciate you, girl. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. Yeah, we got to do We got to do a part two soon. All right, let's go. Next project. You got the interview. All right, y'all y'all heard that right. All right, Rayleigh Evans, we'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you so much. Peace. <laughs>